Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and you are currently watching my second to last single barrel bourbon Monday series. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Benchmark Single Barrel. This is coming in at 95 proof. It is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey coming out of the Buffalo Trace Distillery. And based on what I'm looking at, this is their mash bill number two. And if I'm not mistaken, the mash bill number two make make that a correction mash bill number one mash bill number one is their low rye mash bill and it's rumored to be about 10 percent or less of rye so if you're liking a low rye sweeter bourbon i believe this is going to be right up your alley it doesn't have an age statement it's a 750 milliliter bottle and it's coming in at 22 dollars 99 in phoenix arizona if you didn't know that's where i was so let's go ahead and pour this, nose it, taste it. Not much to talk about. And then if you stick around until the end, I'm gonna give it a score. Now the Benchmark products are not a stranger to this channel. I've done a first Friday flight fight with all of the Benchmarks with the exception of, I think the original Benchmark and then the small batch. So the original Benchmark and the small batch I didn't have. I actually just recently picked up the small batch, it wasn't in my area until just recently. I think I've done a couple of sip it or skip it with the bonded and or the top floor. So if you are interested in that, you can go ahead and just search my channel for that. This is really sweet on the nose. And if you are not subscribed to the channel and you end up liking this information, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below if you've ever had any of the benchmark products. What did you think of them? Share this with somebody. You get the idea. Do those things that YouTubers ask you to do. This comes across as very sweet on the on the nose. I get vanilla, caramel, brown sugar. There is a little bit of a red fruit or a grapey note. It's not as dominant as other benchmark products. Whenever I taste something from a Buffalo Trace, it depends on the, the bottle, but I get a certain amount of oak along with a uh, grape frozen popsicle. So if you take those two together, and you basically chew on the stick of the frozen popsicle after the grape popsicle is finished, you get that oaky grape note. That's kind of what's in here, but it's not as dominant or as prominent as other Buffalo Trace products. But it's there just a little bit. It just comes across as sugary sweet. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate, see if all of that comes through on the palate. Yeah, that's really nice. For a $22 bourbon, this is nice. I understand that from single barrel to single barrel, there will be variation, but based on what I have in this bottle, I like it. It is sugary sweet. You get a good amount of caramel and vanilla. That grapey note and that oak note doesn't really come through on the palate as it did on the nose. My initial thoughts, if you're looking for a $22 bourbon that is straight over a home plate bourbon, this is it. On top of it, it's a single barrel. so. I think the value is really high on this. The flavors are not off-putting. If you were just getting into bourbon, I think this would be a pretty good start. And if you end up not liking it, you can always throw it into a cocktail or a mixer of some sort. Looking at the legs on here, looks like it's pretty viscous, pretty oily. There is a thick rim of whiskey along the top, and then the legs start dropping down. I don't know if that's an indicator of anything or not, but it does look pretty thick. Before I take that second sip, just to note a little bit of the finish, I do get some bitterness on the side of my tongue, and the longer that it sits, the more oaky it gets on the finish. At this point, I would say that it's medium finish, short to medium finish. Let's get that second sip down, see if anything changes, or see if I can get anything else out of it. Second sip, a little bit more barrel influence. I do get that char, I do get that oak, it tends to finish a little bit more on the spicy side, but all of that sweetness is definitely right up front. The vanilla, brown sugar, and the caramel gets that barrel tannin on the side, oaky in the back, and all around, it's a pretty good spicy bourbon as well. A little bit more spicy than I would imagine it being without being a high rye mash bill. Overall, I would say that it's pretty well-rounded. Nothing very sharp, unless you count those spicy notes the pepper and the cinnamon, that's how it will classify the spice, pepper and cinnamon. And if you wanna count those as spiky, 
then go ahead. But I, I really do think this has a pretty good, well-rounded overall mouthfeel. Nothing stands out and nothing is really masked behind everything else. Seems to saturate every part of the mouth. I do get some heat settling in right here into the throat and slightly into the chest. Pretty much all I have to say about that. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in this just because I've been doing that lately. I'm gonna put very little in here because I have a very little left. See if anything happens with the water. And really the only thing I have to mention about Benchmark is the value. If you're looking to get into bourbon and you wanna try some variation, they have a five bottle lineup or a six bottle lineup if you actually include the original Benchmark. They have the single barrel, which is $22, coming in at 95 proof. We have the small batch is $17, and that comes in at 90 proof. And then you get punched in the face with a full proof coming in at 125 proof, but it's only $19.99. A high proof bourbon for under $25, I don't think that can be beat. And then you have the top floor coming at $14.99 at 86 proof, and then you have the bonded coming in at 100 proof, and that's $17.99. So you're taking a look at a pretty budget-friendly lineup. And if you're looking to get into bourbon, like I had mentioned, this might be a route that you want to go. And again, you're not going to be out a whole lot if you don't enjoy them or if you don't like them. And worst case scenario, throw them into a cocktail. If you have had any of the Benchmark products, let me know in the comments down below what you think of them. Where would you rank them? If you've actually done these in a blind, let me know how they ranked for you in the blind, how they finished in the blind. And if you can think, this is going to be a challenge, if you can think of any five bottle lineup that can match the Buffalo Trace benchmark lineup, let me know in the comments below what they would be and what the prices of each of those bottles would be. You know, think about Heaven Hills lineup, think about Wild Turkey, think about Jim Beam, maybe the Woodford Reserve lineup. I don't know. You let me know in the comments down below what five bottle lineup would actually beat the variety and the cost of benchmark. All right, let's go ahead and get this last sip in with the water. See if it did anything with the spice. See if it brought more spice out. Typically, whenever I put water into a bourbon, it seems to separate some of the spice and it gets spicier. Again, when you add water to a whiskey, there are water soluble and non water soluble particles in there. And sometimes it becomes more spicy. Other times it's unchanged. All right, on the nose, I was just about ready to drink it. On the nose, I get more of a fruity note, leaning more towards a strawberry or a cherry. Not much grape coming through. I still get a good amount of sweetness, and there is a lot of oak coming out of this with the water. All right, let's get it on the palate. All right, that's interesting. The spice went away a little bit, and it's now leaning more towards the sweeter profile. Vanilla, brown sugar, and caramel is there, and I would say that is the dominant note. Get a little bit of cherry, no strawberry, and that grape and oak note, I would say is way in the back and it's more oak and not necessarily that grape note. Yeah, not bad with the water. I definitely would not go overboard and throw more than a drop or two in here. And maybe on a hot summer night or a hot summer day, maybe throw an ice cube in it and see how it tastes on the rocks. Yeah, nothing to complain about here. So if you are new to this channel, my rating system is out of five stars. And based on everything that I said about this single barrel Kentucky straight bourbon, straight over the home plate of what you would think a traditional bourbon would taste like. And because of the value that this offers as well, it's going to rank pretty high. Now it's not gonna be ranking up into the four high, but I do think based on the vanilla, caramel and brown sugar, that spice note being a single barrel, under $25, typical bourbon, no sharp edges, did well with the water, would probably stand up nice to a chunk of ice. I'm gonna put this one at 3.5 stars. I like this one quite a bit. I don't remember where this fit into the lineup when I did my first Friday flight fight. I have to go back and take a look at that. I think my top floor, I think the top floor of the bonded, I think the bonded uh, did well in the blind. Now that I have the 
small batch at some point in 2024, I might redo this blind with all of them and maybe even throw in a benchmark as well, like the original benchmark and see how it goes. But this is gonna land at a solid 3.5 stars out of five. That's where I'm gonna leave it today, wherever you're at in your journey. I hope you are enjoying it. And until the next time, we'll talk to you later. And I think my last single barrel bourbon is going to be the Henry McKenna 10. That's been all over this channel. So if you're interested in my last single barrel bourbon review and you're not subscribed, again, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. If you stuck around this long and you actually like this information, like the video, share it with somebody. That's where I'm gonna leave it. We'll talk to you later. Bye. That's a good one.